Hello, I'm Dr. Harold Koplowitz, president of the Child Mind Institute. I am pleased to be part of the Children's Museum of Manhattan's Parenting in Place series. Being able to prevent problems and minimize suffering very early on in someone's life is why I decided to specialize in child and adolescent psychiatry. I can treat a kid for six months and significantly improve his functioning and behavior before unhealthy patterns are locked in. Getting early, effective care for children and families who are suffering is also why I founded the Child Mind Institute in 2009. We are an independent national nonprofit dedicated to transforming the lives of children and families struggling with mental health and learning disorders. Our most important alliance is with parents. And over the past decade, we couldn't help noticing common issues and concerns. They're all worried they're making mistakes that will hurt their kids. They worry about doing too much for their children or not doing enough. They wonder if they should be harder on them or if they're not tough enough. No matter the reason that brings them to the Child Mind Institute, an underlying concern is common to all. Will their kids grow up to be self-reliant? Since the same concerns and questions about raising kids to be independent adults keep coming up with our patient families, our clinicians and I got together to create a new book, The Scaffold Effect, that would work for every family and every kid at every age and developmental stage. Combined, Child Mind Institute clinicians and I have hundreds of years of experience working with families. The sweet spot, philosophically and practically, for raising resilient, self-advocating kids who can cope with stress and learn from their mistakes is what we call scaffold parenting. Parents are the scaffold that provides structure and support for the child as he or she grows up. They are there to protect and guide, but they don't impede learning and risk-taking. Building the framework for scaffolding begins as soon as you bring a baby home in the way you create a supportive environment for them. The coaching aspects of scaffolding begin at age four or five, when children start interacting socially and facing challenges. But scaffolding via support and encouragement continues through childhood, adolescence, and into young adulthood. Scaffold parenting is the single most effective way to encourage kids to climb higher, try new things, and grow from mistakes, while you provide unshakable support. It works for the families who come to the Child Mind Institute, and it will work for yours. Structure, support, and encouragement are the three pillars that form the framework of scaffold parenting. Structure, establish routines, house rules, ways of thinking, and a clear communication style. These are crucial to your child's sense of security and stability. Support, provide empathy and validation. This will help kids learn how to process difficult feelings, which will help them bounce back from rejection and failures. Encouragement. Push your child to try new things and take risks. If you don't encourage your children to risk failure, you're teaching them to be afraid and dependent. Part of providing encouragement means being a good role model and giving corrective feedback. By relying on these three pillars, you will boost your kid's confidence, self-esteem, and coping skills. Pillars apply similarly to every challenge we face as parents, while our five planks, patience, warmth, awareness, dispassion, and monitoring can be uniquely applied to some very practical parenting strategies. Patience, stay steady, even when you have to teach the same lesson over and over again. Warmth, model empathy, affection, and kindness. Show your love and compassion, even when setting limits. Awareness, tune into your child's emotional and practical needs and motivations, as well as your own. Dispassion, stay calm, this is hard no matter how upset you are or how challenging parenting can be. Monitoring, keep close tabs on what's going on with your child and make sure your support is benefiting them. And here's an important caveat that's central to scaffold parenting. The style of your child's construction is not up to you. Any effort from you to block or control growth will actually stunt it. Accept your child's building for what it is, even if it seems strange to, strange to you. When it's all done, he'll live in it, you won't. When my son, Josh, was in fifth grade, he actually announced to his mom and me that he was going to perform at the Thanksgiving Day Assembly at his middle school. We thought this was a little odd because he was such a socially reticent kid. And here he announced that he was going to do a dance with his best friend, Adam, 
as an homage to Michael Jordan. We knew he liked Mar Michael Jordan. In fact, he loved Michael Jordan. He had posters all over his room. But for Josh to say he was going to do a dance in front of the entire school almost sounded like he was going to do surgery. I thought it was a setup for failure. And I was worried and hardwired to protect him, not scaffold, but to protect him. Fortunately, my wife stepped in and said, that sounds like a great idea. I thought, I, I can't believe how the risk of being totally embarrassed in front of an entire middle school would be worth it, but Josh was determined. Three days before the assembly, Josh came home and said, you know, um, Adam doesn't want to do it. And I said, well, sometimes things weren't meant to be. And he said, no, I'm going to do it by myself. I've been working with the dance instructor and she's helping me choreograph it. I'm thinking choreograph it. These are the kind of events that sometimes feel like social suicide to our patients. Our patients even talk about them decades later. And he said, don't worry, dad, it's gonna be terrific. I didn't say the thing about social suicide. My wife said, I'm sure it's gonna be terrific. The day of the assembly came, I wasn't there. My wife teaches at the school. She was in the back of the assembly. I called her later and she said he killed it. It was amazing. He had so much presence. His dance moves were terrific. It was a win. I have to tell you, I was upset with myself because a scaffold parenting offers support, structure, and encouragement and recognizes that failure can be an option. The only way you get a child out of the comfort zone and get into the growth zone is to let them take risks. Impressively, fast forward to his 30th birthday. And his 30th birthday, his best friend, Elias, gets up and says, everyone here knows how much I hate speaking in public, but I love Josh and I wanna wish him a happy birthday. Josh doesn't know this, but the first time I saw him was at the Thanksgiving Day Assembly. I was in fourth grade and they announced that Josh Koplowitz from House 52 was going to be doing an interpretive dance in honor of Michael Jordan. I thought to myself, even in fourth grade, this is social suicide. And yet the stage went dark, a spotlight came on, there was Josh wearing a Chicago Bulls uh, outfit, very baggy, a baseball hat backwards, crisscross came on and Josh started flipping and spinning and the entire assembly got up from fourth grade to eighth grade screaming, go Josh, go Josh. It was amazing. And then on Monday after Thanksgiving, I saw Josh and he was walking in the halls with his head down and carrying too many books, really back to what he usually was like. But I talked to my parents, Aaliyah said, so many times about how brave Josh was and that if he could do that, I could do that. Think about that. If you permit your child to leave the comfort zone and go into the growth zone, you're really able to let him test something out, experience success, maybe failure, but not only have an effect on his own emotional growth, but potentially on some of his friends or even some of his classmates who don't know him. I think the important part is that you really want your child to become the person he wants to become. That same child I thought was great in science, I thought we wanted a doctor. And that's what I thought we were building, a skyscraper. Somewhere along the line, he decided he wanted to be a DJ. And we changed our scaffold from being a doctor to raising a DJ. Then all of a sudden he spent a summer at a bank in his college, between his junior and senior year, and he told us he was going into private equity. We didn't even understand what private equity was, but we recognized that we had to scaffold. The important part is Josh is a grown up today. He is living in his building. The building he claims has a lot of creativity, even though he does private equity. The important part here is that what we want for our children is to take risks, get out of their comfort zone, and then find the kind of house they want to build. And we'll come along with the scaffold to support them, give them structure and encouragement.